1973, a very low-budget, semi-biographical action film was made about a lawman in McNary County, Tennessee, named Buford Pusser. That 1973 movie was called Walking Tall. The movie stars Joe Don Baker as Sheriff Buford Pusser. His wife, Pauline, is played by Elizabeth Hartman. His son, Mike Pusser, is played by Leif Garrett. His daughter, Dewana Pusser, is played by Don Lynn. His dad, Carl Pusser, is played by Noah Barry Jr., who you'll remember from the Rockford Files. He played Jim Rockford's dad in the Rockford Files. His mother, Helen Pusser, is played by Lorraine Tuttle. Now, if you're an Andy Griffith fan, you'll remember Lorraine Tuttle from an episode of Andy Griffith called The Shoplifters. She was the older lady shoplifter that was stealing everything from Weaver's department store. Lorraine was also one of the most widely known character actors in Hollywood, and she taught acting in Hollywood to some of the biggest stars there. Rounding out the cast is the beautiful Brenda Bennett. She plays Luann Paxton. She's kind of the sultress that tempts Joe Don Baker in his role as Buford Pusser. But she seems to be on his side. There's one other interesting person that's in this that plays Sheriff Tanner. He plays the sheriff from the neighboring county in Mississippi. And his name is Red West. Now, if you're an Elvis fan, you'll know that Red West was Elvis's buddy, and he was also a pretty active stuntman and actor in Hollywood. Now, in the title role, Joe Don Baker, as we said, plays Buford Pusser, and he's a real-life high school football hero, ex-Marine, and professional wrestler who returned to his small Tennessee hometown to find out that it had turned into a rather seedy place to live. It doesn't take long for him to run into trouble with the vice lords there and the corrupt police department. And while working at his father's sawmill, he carves a big stick, which he uses to beat up his enemies. Now these actions get him in trouble at first, but they eventually lead to him being elected sheriff. Once he's in that capacity, he starts taking on the bootleggers, the prostitution, and he didn't worry about people's civil rights. He just took care of business. At the beginning and the very end of the film, there's a disclaimer that comes up, and it kind of suggests that it's partially based on his life. And I've read where it's about 80% true. Some of it has taken on some Hollywood magic to make the film more appealing. But as a general rule, a big portion of the film is considered to be true. Through the course of the film, he's beaten up, shot, mangled in a car accident, only to recuperate from each incident and place his hand on the carved club and administer justice once more. This is during a time when revenge films were really starting to bloom out in Hollywood. There had just been the movie Billy Jack, which was a really popular movie, somewhat like Walking Tall. The relentlessly violent film is directed by Phil Carlson. Audience members can identify with its hero, a southern sheriff who wants to be a man of peace, a sort of down-home Serpico with a Tennessee accent. The film was written and produced by Mort Briskin. He was a veteran Hollywood producer who had some really good credits like the Jackie Robinson story of 1950 and the 1951 film The Magic Face. The philosophy of Walking Tall is not all that odd. It's been accepted in countless westerns including High Noon in which a single man sets out to be society's conscience. It teaches us that one good apple can save a barrel of rotten ones. The film is shot entirely in Tennessee. In addition, it's very well acted by the large cast. And it looks and sounds very authentic. You get caught up in its suspense and its hero's sense of duty. It's also very difficult to not be affected by the terrible price that he eventually pays. 
Now, in real life, Sheriff Buford Pusser, on August 12, 1967, got a call about a disturbance on the side of the road just outside of town. Although it was really early in the morning, his wife Pauline decided to accompany him to investigate this call. As they drove through the small town towards the site of the disturbance, a car pulled alongside theirs. The occupants of that car opened fire on Sheriff Pusser's car, killing Pauline and wounding him. He was left on the side of the road for dead, and it took him 18 days and several surgeries to recover from this incident, but he finally pulled through. He returned home from the hospital with a mangled jaw and no wife, and he was hell-bent on revenge. He vowed that before he died, he would bring everyone who killed his wife to justice. Before he was a revenge-driven widower, Buford Pusser was a quiet and a respectable man. He'd been born there in McNary County, and he played basketball and football in high school there. He excelled in both. After he was in high school, he joined the Marine Corps and eventually was medically discharged due to asthma. Then he moved to Chicago and became a local wrestler. He went by the name of Buford the Bull, and his success earned him local fame. While he was in Chicago, that's where he met his future wife, Pauline. In December of 1959, the two were married, and two years later, they moved back to his childhood home in Tennessee. He was initially the police chief and constable in his small town prior to becoming sheriff. You don't see that in the movie, but in truth, that's the way it was. In 1964, he was elected sheriff after the former sheriff was killed in an automobile accident. At that time, he was just 27 years old, which made him the youngest sheriff in Tennessee's history. As soon as he got elected, he just threw himself into his work. He turned his attention for the vice that was going on in his hometown and the surrounding areas. One of them was called the Dixie Mafia, and the other was the State Line Mob. A Buford Pusser over the next few years survived several assassination attempts. The mob bosses for the entire tri-state area were set on taking him out. But then disaster struck when Pauline was killed. It's thought that they were just intending to kill Buford, and she was just an unintended casualty. Not very long after the shooting, he named the four assassins. One of them was Kirksey McCord Nix Jr. He was the leader of the Dixie Mafia and he kind of orchestrated the ambush. Now, he was never brought to justice for this crime. One of the hitmen was thought to be Carl Toehead White, and he ended up being gunned down by a hitman several years later. Most people believe that Sheriff Pusser himself hired the assassin to kill him. After several more years passed, two of the other killers were found shot to death in Texas. Here again, the rumors started to swirl that Sheriff Pusser killed them both, but he was never convicted of that. Now, Nix, the one that orchestrated this crime, I believe he is still in prison in Louisiana. This is a mean guy. This is a guy that orchestrated a hit on a judge and his wife in Biloxi, Mississippi, and he did it while he was incarcerated in Louisiana. Now, the story of Sheriff Buford Pusser is a very uplifting story about a guy that tries to change for the good the way his town is going. But associated with the production of the movie Walking Tall, there are some terribly tragic events that happened afterwards. The actress that played his wife, Elizabeth Hartman, after she was cast in this role, her career started to take a skid. She was one of the most promising actresses in Hollywood originally. But after this movie, she started a real downhill slide. She was plagued by depression. And she felt inadequate. She thought she was bad at what she did. 
When the truth be known, she was an excellent actress that everybody admired. On June 10th of 1987, she took her own life by jumping out the window of her fifth floor apartment. Earlier that morning, she had called her psychiatrist and told him that she felt terribly despondent. Then there's the beautiful Brenda Bennett, who played the sultress in the movie. Brenda has quite the resume of her acting credits. She had a long-time role on Days of Our Lives, and then she was married to Bill Bixby in 1971. The couple had a child, Christopher Sean, in September of 1974, but they ended up divorcing in 1980. In 1981, she experienced the loss of that child, Christopher, who died of cardiac arrest while they were on vacation in Mammoth Lakes. She was just absolutely devastated at her son's death, as you can imagine, and she sank into a terrible depression. On April 7, 1982, she took her own life at her home in Los Angeles. She was only 36 years old. Now, in Adamsville, Tennessee, Dewana Pusser ran the museum and house that honored the legacy of her father, Buford Pusser. But on March 7, 2018, she took her own life. How sad this is. She was a beautiful lady. I've seen interviews with her, and she was well-spoken and really fun to listen to. I've heard that she had MS, and with that, there's sometimes a really strong link to depression. Now, the final sad thing about this whole story is that Buford Pusser actually died shortly after he came to fame with this movie. He died in August of 1974 from injuries that occurred in a one-car automobile accident. Earlier that day, he had been contacted by Bing Crosby Productions in Memphis to actually portray himself in a sequel to Walking Tall. Sheriff Pusser struck an embankment at a high rate of speed, and he was ejected from the vehicle. The vehicle caught fire and burned. And I think they actually had that vehicle at the home or the museum that was there in his hometown. Now, his daughter, Dewana, always thought that somebody had sabotaged the steering mechanism in the tie rods of his car. And she thought that people were still out to get him because he had made so many enemies in the seedy underground of that area. Now, Walking Tall was a box office smash. It was produced on a budget of $500,000, and the film grossed $40 million. This was one of those films that made you want to stand up and clap at the end. And people actually did in a lot of theaters. What a great movie to watch. Check it out. It's on Amazon Prime right now at the time of this filming. And I watched it again myself the other day. I hadn't seen it in a few years, and it was great. It was everything I remembered. Check it out. You'll enjoy it. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll continue to chase the classics.